Welcome back, everyone. It's one of the many perks of living in sunny Florida, outdoor living. And with an endless amount of activities to keep us occupied outside, there's also a higher risk for things like bug bites, marine stings, and even seasonal chemicals. And knowing how to avoid and treat these things can make all the difference in your summer fun. So joining us now with the tips we need is Dr. Mm -hmm. Emily James Winograd with the Florida Poison Control. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Because I walked Thank outside you. the other day for four minutes, Max had 12 bug bites all over oh, me. Wow. So this is much needed information. All right, so one of the biggest and probably most common outdoor issues is obviously bug bites. Is there a right and a wrong when it comes to repellent? Definitely, and that's mm. especially true when it comes to children. So one of the most common ingredients in bug sprays is DEET. Yeah. Um, but this kind of ingredient shouldn't be used in kids who are less than two months old. So kids older than two months, you wanna be careful about how you're applying the product. It shouldn't go directly on their face, so if you um, want to put it on their face, it's better to put it on the hands of an adult first, and then you can kind of rub it in that way. And then something else to keep in mind, you want to make sure kids get a good bath before they go back inside with all of this bug spray product on them. Don't want to go to bed with that. Oh, is deep skin. bad for the environment though? Because I mean, you know, you hear these little myths about tr using all natural versus the, the repellents that have DEET in them. It's very controversial. Um, DEET is a very effective repellent and that's one of the things that makes it more popular, but there are a lot of people who prefer to use the more natural products. And so it's really up to the preference of the individual using it. How well do the natural products work? <laughs> In my opinion, I think the DEET containing products work better, but I know people who swear by the natural ones too. Uh -huh. So what if, they, what if they don't work and you're actually stung or you know, by an insect or get a bite, what should we do? So for the most part, insect bites, the big thing you're gonna see is just gonna be itchy and irritating, mm -hmm. but that can still be annoying. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the simple things we recommend doing is making a paste with baking soda or baking powder. Um, a lot of people have that available in their kitchen. Baking powder and water? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You just mix it together until you have a paste. You can apply it directly on the bite, and that does a lot to help with the itching. If How so? Magic? No. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Can you rub that on my bank account? <laughs> if it's magic like that, wow. It just I've has a, heard of that. Yeah, it has a soothing effect. It's um, a basic product versus being acidic, and that can just help relieve some of the itching. So is that better than using aloe? Not necessarily. If aloe gives you relief too, our recommendation for irritating bug bites is really whatever's going to make it feel better to you, whether mm. that's the baking powder or an aloe-based product. Or a glass Screaming. of wine. Yeah. Or the little trick that your mom does where she puts her thumbnail in the bug bite and makes so a little Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> My mom did that yeah. to me. I've never heard of that. Oh, yeah. I'll I'll do do that. That. yeah. Okay, well, so what if, like, this is a big, big snake season, it seems like. I've seen so many snakes outside my house already. What about other people that have seen a lot of snakes or possibly bitten by a snake? What can we do then? Yeah, that's definitely a scarier situation mm -hmm. than the mosquito bite. So there's six species of venomous snakes in Florida. So if you're with someone or if you're bitten by a venomous snake, we kind of have some do's and don'ts that we recommend. Things you do want to do, leave the extremity alone, elevate it to heart level. Mm. You want to remove any tight um, clothing or jewelry that might be in the area. Things you don't want to do, you don't want to try and suck out the venom. Mm. You don't want to put um, a tourniquet around the limb that would like cut off the circulation. You really just want to get the individual to a hospital. Do you need to catch the snake though? That's what you always hear because what? because you don't know what bit you. You don't know if it is venomous or not. You said there's six that are, mm -hmm. and how do I know? I'll be well, like, what if I you just take a picture? Orange, or it was black. Or, Who's doing all yeah, that when you got bit? bit? Yeah, when right? you're bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab my phone or let me catch it or have somebody else. You catch would be it. surprised at the number of people that will bring snakes into the emergency department. Yeah, oh. that's what I've heard. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it's not necessary. We don't require a person to bring a snake into the ER. A picture can be very helpful, but of course we don't want people chasing the snakes down after they've been bit and trying to get a picture. We'll be able to manage the envenomation based on how they present clinically. Oh, are there um, okay. certain areas okay. throughout the state of Florida where these venomous snakes are more commonly found? They're definitely more common in rural areas where you have more trees and forests and mm -hmm. uh, underbrush and things like that. Mm -hmm. Less common in the uh, more urban areas, but they can be found anywhere. And I would imagine right now with all the rain we're experiencing, the lawn, uh, the grass is really high yep. and those snakes can be hidden in the grass. Are there any precautions that we should take to kind of avoid that? So the best recommendation there is when you're outside wearing tall socks, boots, pants, but oh, it's, it's, hot. it's Florida in the middle of the summer. <laughs> no one's going to do that. So that will help you not get bitten, but it's a balance between sweating to death and Getting, getting yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'd rather not. take sweating than, you know, possibly losing my leg or Says something. Says the person who don't cut grass. That's true. <laughs> not anymore. Okay. Not anymore. So let's switch over now and talk about um, the pool 
and um, the, the risk surrounding pool chemicals, because that is a big one as well. Absolutely. One of the biggest um, issues that we get called about is individuals using chlorine or shock treatments in a not very well ventilated area. They might open up the product, get a big whiff of it, they'll start coughing, have a hard time breathing. Mm -hmm. Really the best thing to do in a case like that is to just get yourself to fresh air. If you remove yourself to fresh air for an hour, have a cool glass of water, most of the time that's gonna help resolve those irritating symptoms from getting a big whiff of the pool chemicals. But other things to keep in mind, you always wanna make sure you're keeping things like that out of the reach of children and pets because they can definitely be harmful if ingested. And is there is there a, like a temperature grade that you should be storing these pool chemicals in? Like, can you put them in your garage that gets you know like 100 degrees in the middle of the day or higher? The product should have storage instructions on the box, and so it's always best to follow the instructions for use as well as storage that the manufacturer recommends. Hmm. All right. So what about when you're at the beach and we've all heard you get stung by a jellyfish? It's like, oh, you just urinate on the person. What? Right? On the person? On the on the on, on the, the stage? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend that. Okay, oh. all right. You heard you that. You made that up. No, There's I no swear. No, no. It's, oh. But you that's hear it. That's what they say. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what you hear. That's what they say. Yeah. Yep. It, we definitely hear about people thinking that that's the appropriate way to deal with a jellyfish And that is false thing. or is that it true? Where did that even false. come from? False. False. Please okay, don't do so that, what people. should you do if you get stung by a jellyfish or I guess a sea urchin too? Yeah. Biggest thing to do is make sure you've got all of the tentacles or the spines if it's a sea urchin removed. And the best way to do that is to use the same seawater that the animal came out of. So you, you might need to use a credit card or even like a butter knife, anything that's hard to help kind of scrape it off. And then at that point, once you've gotten all the tentacles removed, you can actually put vinegar on it, and that sometimes helps with the pain associated with it. Um, Does sting. that also remove the tentacles, vinegar? Does that it won't help as much as the actual seawater will. So the best thing is really the same seawater that the animal came out of. Do you need to go see a doctor if you've been stung by a jellyfish or a sea urchin? It depends on the symptoms you're having. Again, for the most part, similar to insect stings, mm -hmm. you're just going to have that local irritation. But if the pain is really significant or if the person is having any more significant symptoms than that, nausea, vomiting, if they just don't feel well, that would, of course, be a reason to go into the doctor. Wow. This is so... I'm staying open inside. My eyes. Stay inside. Take cover. <laughs> All right, so finally, for those who use or are around pesticides, what tips do you have for keeping a safe distance from those? Especially when, you know, we see that they're being sprayed like this. So one of the big things is to make sure you're following the instructions that are on the bottle so that you're using it correctly. And make sure you're storing it in the same bottle that it came in. You'd be surprised how many people put all different kinds of household chemicals in water bottles or other containers, what, what? and then someone else comes along and drinks it because they oh, think it's, yeah. it's something to drink. I did that when I was a kid. Oh my God. My mom you put did? it, yeah, you know that oh, um, no. plant food that's blue? Yeah. I went outside and I drank the whole bottle of plant food. It was good. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was in seeing the doctor, that just like you after. Lot, my yes, I know. That's what happens <laughs> when you're special. tiny and you think, All right, well, don't do so that. Don't tell me. <laughs> so hide those blue pesticides. <laughs> yeah. Listen to Dr. Winograd, not Angelia. All right, thank you so much for these tips. Obviously, very helpful. It is the middle of summer. It's very important. We're all outside most of the time. And remember, you can call the free poison help hotline. 24 hours a day for free confidential advice. That number is 1-800-222-1222. Pretty easy to remember. You can also find more helpful information at floridapoisoncontrol.org. And up next, some of the hottest summer fashion trends. Adrian Houghton shows us how to get the looks inspired from the runway when we come back.